Hello, hello! The new Spiral Abyss for 2.8 has released, and I'm here doing this video to hopefully help you conquer it. So let's dive right through and start with the blessings. For phase 1, which we have at the time of this recording, we have the Valiant Moon. When a character takes a field, they will gain one fortitude stack every 2 seconds. This will increase their attack by 20%, maximum of 3 stacks. When characters with 3 stacks hit opponents with church attacks, a shockwave will be unleashed in the opponent's position, dealing true damage. A shockwave can be unleashed in this manner once every 2 seconds. When the character leaves the field, all their stacks will be cleared. In layman's terms, an unfilled character gets 20-60% to 60 bonus attack, do a church attack after 6 seconds in field to deal additional damage, leave the field, and lose the buff for that character. For characters that I think that will benefit from this buff, Heizou, Wu Tao, Klee, and Ningguang come to my mind since they're the only ones that do stay on the field for an extended period and do charge attacks. You could also use it on Raiden during her burst form, or Xiao if you're doing the jet combo. Arguably, Gan you can benefit from it as well, but we'll see later how the content is not favorable towards cryo characters. On the next Abyss reset, Happening on the 1st of August, we'd have Phase 2 or the Windswept Moon. When a character triggers Swirl on an opponent, the opponent's death is decreased by 12% for 10 seconds, maximum of 3 stacks. Straight up, it is a call towards using Anima characters. Aside from the elemental resistance shred from using 4 VB, triggering Swirls will reduce enemy defense by up to 36%, which will visibly make your characters hit harder and increase your overall DPS. The last abyss phase for this patch, which will take place on the 16th of August, has a shivered moon blessing. After the active character's normal, charge, or plunging attacks hit opponents, that character's normal, charge, and plunging attack damage is increased by 12% for 8 seconds. This buff works well for characters that scale well with their normal attack damage. Obviously, it was meant to highlight Yemiya for her banner later in the patch, but the buff also helps Xiao Planches, Hu Tao Church attacks, and Razor and other physical builds with their normal attacks. Floor 11 grants a 75% pyro damage bonus, so if you can, maximize it by bringing your best pyro characters. The first chamber is a monolith defense. First half features sky based enemies so pyro characters are at further advantage with melt. Second half has regular mobs, so some sort of crowd control will be good with animal characters. 11-2 first half has cryo, electro, and hydro-based enemies, again reinforcing pyro supremacy. And second half have a two agents of different elements. You can plan to counter specific enemies with elements for their shields, or prioritize eliminating them before they can get their shields up, or Use Animo to make those shields work against them. The first half of the third chamber sees the return of a hated enemy, the Ed Thunder Manifestation. Everyone that has seen the ad for a certain gadget know well enough that bringing in an electro unit is a bad idea here because the enemy is electro immune. Instead, pyro characters are better to trigger overload or hydro to have electro charge, or best, bring both trigger overweight. Range units are good too because the Thunder Manifestation keeps on moving around. Second half has three Abyss Mages with Hydro, Electro, and Cryo. Same with the previous chamber, you can up to tar target counter their shields or use an anime unit to swirl them together. For actual lineups, Pyro DPS units are obviously best especially for the first half. The existence of the Thunder Manifestation Chamber 3 suggests Yoimiya as a strong candidate. However, because the two other chambers are mob-based floors, Xiangling remains to be the best bet for me. To fill in the other slots, some form of national with Bennett in a hydro application is highly suggested. Based on my characters, I opt the core of Xiangling, Bennett, and Xingqiu, and choosing a range driver like Sucrose. For the second half, the only must for me is an animal unit with good crowd control and decent AoE. Since I already opted to put Sucrose in the other team, I'm going to be putting Kasua here. 
and then fill up the rest of the slots with other elemental based things that could synergize well with him like an Ayaka Fleece team or Taser teams since my best pyro units are already in team 1. For any monolith defense, the best thing to do is to step back and check which mobs are targeting you and which ones are aggro towards the monolith. You then attack the latter to divert their attention towards you as well. So for the first half, focus first on smaller slimes because the large ones will be going towards you. After a wave of slimes and specters, you'd have the ice shield miniatures which will all aggro towards you, so just lead them away from the monolith and you can go free. For second half, same thing, get the aggro of the enemy started in the monolith. In this case, it will be the dudes. So just distract them or stun them and you'll be put into this floor. Floor 11-2 is nothing special, just your DPS check. Although with the second half, in case you didn't bring units with specifically counter shields, make sure to target those enemies first and prevent them from getting their shields up. Floor 11-3 brings a thunder manifestation will annoy a lot of players, but it basically is just reading face attack patterns and knowing when to unleash your burst. Things to dodge will be the closing electric curtain as well as a crack mirror. Make the most out of your range attacks with Sintra's Rain Sword or Catalyst attacks, which will auto-target to damage him. Stay clear. Rain outlines your face. 
second half of this floor against the three abyss mages is kinda like the complex domain. You run bottom left immediately after starting the fight and get them to teleport towards you. Then please set up with their idle birds or official us while they do. But once they TP, you enter your Aduma ability, the Castle's burst, which work them together to destroy your shields, and that is free real estate. There's no lane buff for floor 12 sadly. First half has a lot of prior shields. So again, a pirate team is optimal here. Because of the mob content, it is again a natural angle for me with Shangling and Bennett leading. I like putting in Kasua as well for crowd control and buffing and that he can infuse pyro with his food burst, therefore helping against the cry shields. For the last slot, this is a toss up between Singshu and Yelan, whereas I opt for the latter because her offensive capability is much more useful for me than Singshu's defensive buffs given that I already have beta healing. Second half has your mobbing floor, ruined enemies, and another annoying enemy in the form of the ruined serpent. Of all this, I'm most concerned with the ruined serpent, so I focus on putting single target units with off-field capabilities to deal as much damage as I could during the short windows that he is vulnerable. Top pick for me will be Xingqiu, Fischl, and Yelan, but since I've already chosen Yelan in Team 1, then I'm left with Sinchu and Fischl here, and then filling the team with other units that can synergize with them, that's either a Sucrose Taser team with Beidou or Huta Wei team with Shongli. Floor 12 1 1 has a lot of small mobs, so you'd want to be dealing AoE damage as much as you could. I like opening up with the land skill to round them up together to a Bennett burst, to a Kasuma burst, and infusing it with Pyro to a buff Shangli burst. From there, it's basically just trying to round them up and doing as much damage as I could to as many enemies at a time. Second half starts off with 3k raggies and once you're done with them, 2 nobushis follow afterwards. This half also features an electro node which at first looks to be very at disadvantageous towards the pacer team. However, note that you will still have Sinchu's flame swords and Sucrose's thrusts that will remove this electro aura easily so it's not really a problem. Since this is the first chamber, you can also easily just put in another thing to clear this with 3 stars and reset with using me to taste your team for the next two chambers. Or maybe just run your Hu Tao slash Pyrovate carry across all if you can deal with the mobs one at a time. Only call out here is to kill both Kairagis at the same time, otherwise the last one will heal and extend your clear. The Cryo Hypostasis in 1221 is probably my favorite enemy in this abyss. It has a number of attack patterns, most of of which is its rolling attack. The way I deal with it is if it does this, I lure him towards the edge to prevent him from running elsewhere. As for his other attacks, I use it to set up my characters and just unga bunga whenever he is vulnerable. Quiet. 
Time to go. Wind strike. Busted. Once you deplete his HP, it triggers a shield phase. And this is what's interesting for me. Did you know that aside from throwing back the foots at him, your pyro attacks can damage the shield? The time saving tactic I found out is the Goba tech, where you need to throw out Goba at the start of the shield phase to let him help him melt his shield, while you charge attack on the foots. When doing this, you only need to throw back 2 foots compared to 3, which saves you a few seconds. Also, remember to stand close to the cry hypostasis when he's throwing the foots so that it wouldn't be too far away, therefore saving more time. Second half of Salt 2 is among the most annoying for me because of the RNG on the Ruben enemies. Ideally, you'd want to start it by running beside one of the Doritos to force him to jump backwards to the other Dorito. However, triggering this has been inconsistent for me. Anyways, it's not a biggie if you can't. Just attack one of the Doritos and the Jellyfish which will naturally move towards you. The Dorito will die earlier compared to the Jellyfish because of lower HP, so run towards the second Dorito do the jellyfish there and do the same. Once you're done with this wave, there's another RNG whether the snake will move or not. You can stay still to survey which one will borrow and run towards the one that stays still. Or if both of them will dig down, go to the ruined grader. If no one will dig down, just choose one of the snakes and kill it with the ruined grader while waiting for the second one to approach you. Floor 12.31 as the Stowing Waters leave off which will make the cooldown for your skills 150% down. Ideally, you'd only need to one rotation the enemies here to make the debuff not matter. Again, I highly value the combination of Casual Pyro and Whispers and Shangling's Pyro Nado to get through the shields and kill off the enemies. Standing on Ben's Burst also removes the Hydro R army because of the constant fire application. Otherwise, other strategies include using the Electrical Resonance or using the Prayers for Destiny's Reflect which drops from Ocean Aid. Both of these will make you affected by stowing waters for less time. There's not a lot of techniques I found that can be used against a ruined serpent in Fall 3 2. You're basically at the mercy of which attack patterns it will use and just time their damage. So again, this is the reason I bring in off-field damage units such as Fischl and Sichu to fit in as much damage with my on-field DPS as I can in the short windows that I have available. And so, that's it! 
As an added bonus, here's a code that you can use to redeem for 60 Primo Gems. Hopefully, this guide has been helpful in your clears. If it did, I'd appreciate the like and subscribe to encourage me to do more in the future. Till then, GG's! Kill!